Welcome to another great MagnaRail tutorial. This is number one of a two-part series on the creation of our new Cato Lake MagnaRail layout for MagnaRail Oz. Uh, this is our exhibition layout. First task was to sort out what we're going to do. We've got three circuits, uh, a boat lake circuit, a bicycle circuit, and then a vehicle circuit. Having set it all out, I then link it all together, know where everything lies on the board, and then I just go around and mark everything onto the board. This is so we can later route her out the gaps um, and slot it in. A flexible uh, piece here, which comes from a sewing kit, uh, which was my wife's and it helps get all those curves nice and, and tight and flowing. It, in actual fact, it's just about the right size um, for the channeling. So you can see here we've got the three sets, the MZB08, which is the basic boat starter set, so that's what you get the size for that, MZB01, which is the bicycle set, and I've added an extra motor with this but used only one of the turning circles and the final one is the MZB02 which is the fast motor set and I've added an extra motor and an extension set to that. This is on a board that's only 1200 long by 600 wide and uh, yeah it's just something, a small little set that we're going to try and take, well, we will be taking, have taken to, to exhibitions. So with routering, I always cover my hands because the fine particles tend to cling to everything. And I wear a long sleeve shirt. So the first set is to get the depth right on your router so it's just exactly the same, uh, including the little ridge that goes down the spine of the, the channeling. And this way, when it goes into the, uh, the channeling is embedded in, into the foam, uh, it will be perfectly level. Won't have any dips, won't have any high parts, it'll be level. Now I'm using this um, foam, which I had bought from Bunnings, because my great Knopf one that we used to have uh, is no longer uh, in Australia, anywhere that I've found. If you've found it somewhere, give me a call. I'd love to know. But it was a case of have to do. I had a, a big exhibition coming up and I need to get this made. I would not recommend it. Um, the sticking power, it actually repels glue uh, and uh, I was not impressed with it at all. So I've had a few problems with it lifting off the board. Um, later on, but yeah, don't recommend if you can find an alternative or if you just wanted to do it into hardwood. But I find this is the best way to, to mount your Magna Rail system. Um, obviously the drive motors need a, a bit deeper, um, but you'll see later on where we strip all the, the sides off the channeling so it just slots perfectly. And in doing this, it does, it just fits tight um, so there's no having to screw things down. I've got thousands of screws that come with the Magna Rail set now. Um, but this also means that I don't have to build up road bed beside it uh, to make it uh, even to be able to run your vehicles. Now we go around with my battery operated Dremel, best tool I've ever bought. You've got a corded Dremel, throw it away and get the battery operated Dremel. Lasts for ages and it's just so easy to handle um, without the cord pulling away. And also you can take it to shows, you can do anything. Uh, it's there for repairs. So I remove all the uh, extensions um, on the, the side of the channeling, and then this then does fit so perfectly 
uh, into that groove that you've just made. Um, so the Dremel just cleans it all up. So this is the size loop you get when you do the boat, the basic boat set. A 7th 8 drill hole, hole drill, uh, makes the exact size that you need for your motors. So rather than cut out the whole thing, I cut these out separately. Um, and that way it keeps it nice and tight. Of course, if anything goes wrong, you've got to be able to lift the surface off instead of dropping it down underneath. If you still want to make a permanent fixture on top, um, well, cut your, your motor part out completely and then you're able to drop it down um, from below. Uh, but I find that uh, nine times out of 10, uh, you've got no need to be able to, to pull off the top layer. But if you do, uh, it's all repairable. All right, so mounting the motor, and this is a, a key thing. I put the screws in first, because my fingers uh, don't have much dexterity in my fingertips. Um, I actually have neuropathy, so I can't hold fiddly little things. But if you put the screws in first, then match up the holes and tie it and screw it down. Um, and when there's nothing uh, to distinguish from the top what the motor is, I just have put an F on that so I know that it's a fast motor without having to pull up and look underneath for the drop down part of the motor. So as you can see, they fit snugly. The only thing, you'll notice the curves that I've got on the side, and this will be shown up later, uh, you've got to allow a bit more because the cogs on the, um, the gears need that extra bit of clearance outside of the, the mounting. So make sure you remove all the sprue that's there, uh, especially the one on the top. The number of times people have said, I hear this clicking noise. Well, the clicking noise are the bits of sprue that you haven't cleaned off. So make sure it's perfectly clean. I just use a triangular file which fits into the gears perfectly. And uh, that's for both gears. And you'll see how they just mesh perfectly later on. Once again, use your tie cutters to be able to get all that rubbish out. And then give it a good file with the triangular file, or any file, but just a small one. But get that lug that's still there off, um, so you'll have smooth sailing and no problems once it's operational. Alright, so your next step um, is to put on the O-rings which come with your motor mounting kit. Now you'll notice there's the, the two different ones uh, for your, your gears. Uh, the one that goes over the motor um, has a flat side on the inside of the wheel and that matches the motor uh, which has got a the pin coming up, the drive mode part of the motor has a flat section as well. So you match that up, push it down till it's firmly down and it's flush with the top of the, the plastic and the steel are flush. If you don't have them flush, it'll create a rising um, thing for the chain going through. It'll be picking up the higher one and lifting it out of your, your drive and causing problems later on. So you saw me just cut that little bit of foam away so it has clearance on the side there. The slip up, slip on the sleeve on the inside, which is what is running on the, the underneath plastic. Push that in, it has a stopper to stop it from rising out and the gear should just mesh perfectly. Just check that there's no clicking or anything, make sure you've got rid of all your sprue in that instance. The next thing I do, and this is something that's not in the Magna Rail manuals, or nothing in the manual, is to put a piece of clear acetate over the top. Now, I do this to stop the train from rising as it goes through the motor housing, but also I mark it out completely 
The other thing I've been doing is to get the center of the chain and on the side of each of these, and that's to cut out a V. So there's no hard surface for the chain to be hitting against. Because as you're going over with a vehicle on top, you're lifting the magnet up. And of course, if it hits a straight edge, it'll clunk or just, you know, knock your, your vehicle or bicycles off. I then go through and puncture all the holes because it's acetate, it's not paper, so it takes a little bit of, of uh, pressure to get through. Just do a star on those. Um, sorry about the wobbles, but the camera was on a, a clip that was on the bench, so uh, there's a few wobbles sometimes when it uh, gets the bounce up. Now, in, in all of your um, motors, the motor sets, you get four countersunk screws. Now don't get these confused with your track screws that hold the track in place if you use the channeling above uh, the, the roadbed. These are designed to go into um, this housing and then they'll sit flush. Um, so when you put your roadbed on top there won't be any lumps uh, of screws sticking up. So don't never get those two confused. These are specifically for uh, the motor drive units. So make sure they're nice and tight. Now with this, because I had a lake, I didn't want it to be sitting on the surface, so I wanted to countersink it down. And this involved just working out where the fringes of my lake will be. Um, so just a rough drawing around here and then using my hot knife uh, which just goes off a phone power pack, it's a USB uh, driven one, turn it on, let it warm up for a second and away you go. And because the heat's going up and down I, I just sort of go up and down as well just to get the heat you know, dispersed across it. But it's like a hot knife through butter, um, does a really good job and uh, have that cut out in a matter of minutes. There you go, turn it off. I always just get a terpsy rag and wipe that any glue, any uh, foam residue off. And then we just pop it out. How easy was that? And this is a way of getting a bit of dimension um, on your layout, so it's not one big flat area. Nothing worse than having a creek or a pond and it's the same level as your road. Found some of my old scrap uh, foam, which is the one I love, uh, because you can screw it, you can nail it, you can glue it. Whereas this other one, uh, it's just not compact enough. As I said, if anyone can find this in the marketplace, get back to me. Um, so I've cut blocks, which I'll then cut down further and uh, make a, a lip. And these will be underneath the, um, the layout. And they'll be holding the, the, uh, the lake portion at that height. It's only oh, just one or two centimetres down from the the road level, um, but it's enough uh, to use your imagination. This is another one of my uh, cutters, which is great for doing this sort of work. And so this will be supporting the, um, the main board, and then the cutout will just sit on top of that that drop down level. Gave it all a painting of the sort of rock coloured paint I keep on hand for my modelling. Um, the inside <coughs> was uh, just to, to deflect any blue uh, that was coming out of the, the foam, uh, just a rough paint. 
So I'm still going to be covering the top, but also the sides um, on the water level uh, will be getting a, a sand finish. So there we go. So this is the, the uh, lake cut out with the foam blocks attached to them. Um, and uh, we'll see that later when it gets centered. The basic boat set is great if you just want to drop something into the centre of your layout in that dead part um, and you could just cut it out and drop this in. Now this section that we've coloured brown uh, is going to be open to the public so they can see the workings. That's why it's a defined line. What I like to use is our embossed lake water which Currently we're out of stock of, but uh, if you're interested, send me an email and we'll put you on the, the wait list for it. Here we go again, cutting all the extensions off. Um, this is for the bicycle set. <coughs> and uh, yeah, it just does a good job. You will notice, um, coming up to here, these little nodules that are on the side. And they're actually made to hold reed switches. So the original inventors of Magna Rail were thinking ahead if you wanted to control something with the magnets going past a point, um, you turn the magnet side on and uh, instead of north-south they're east-west and uh, they will then activate a reed switch which can stop motors, get scenarios <coughs> moving other areas. So yeah, Great idea, but you don't need them in this instance. So the chain, the channel's in, and we're just showing you what it's like with our, our water. This is a shot of the underneath with the supports there, and I've just raised up the whole layout with those blocks, so they are above this, the area to be able to have the motors dropping down. So now we've got the test going with the motor in there in the boats uh, as you can see you'll pick up a magnet how slow it is it is a crawling space a pace and that's what they're designed for so here we have the three of them all going you can see the the fast motor zipping around the outside and then the medium motor of the bikes and then the slow motor of the boats that just gives you the comparison now i've covered all this with uh, acetate or just a clear um, sheeting. I think I just used yeah, whatever I could find. I didn't buy a big roll of it, but then this is what I attached it, everything to later on. So you can see it has the clear effect here, so people can see the operations of the whole Magna Rail system. Um, magnets are all embedded there which we'll show you on the number two tutorial and we've got our HOE uh, three train going around. Being in scale we can get a much tighter uh, track going around but HO scale uh, trains so that's why we've got the narrow gauge uh, trains going around that. As I said, you'll see this in full on number two of the part two of the tutorial. Putting the island in, it's just a big block of foam. Um, it just breaks it down, so you keep that sort of magic uh, if people are viewing it from one side or another. I'll all ex explain the bitumen roads that we've got here. Great product from Bush or Bosch. Um, really wrapped up in that. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned.